Hey everyone, before I get out in my garden, I wanted to address a um, question that was posted to one of my posts on Facebook. Um, someone asked how to handle a pushy OB situation. Um, this was in particular to, particular to inductions, but I just kind of want to address it as a broad um, subject or topic because as women, we have to first realize and understand and remember that we are whole grown women. We are grown women. Um, about to become mamas are already a mama. And that does not change when we cross the threshold of an OB office or a hospital. That's first. You are a whole grown woman, autonomous person. You have control over your body and your baby. Now, secondly, we have to remember that our OBs, God bless them, we love the great ones, um, and midwives, they are providing us a service. They have a very respected, skilled trade, and we appreciate that fact. That's why we hire them. However, birth, first and foremost, is not broken. That's something we have to understand, ladies. We have to understand that birth is not a medical situation or condition that occasionally happens naturally. Birth is a natural occurrence, a natural body function that occasionally needs med medical attention. Occasionally. Unfortunately, we don't live in the era that recognizes that. We live in the era of intervention. So there's not many of us that understand our bodies were designed to do exactly what it needs to do. For women who are watching this video, you're not sitting there on the couch or in the car, wherever you are, trying to grow lungs and eyes and lips and hair follicles. It was a, it is the miracle of who we are, okay? So having that knowledge, trusting that first, that you're not broken, unless there is some evidence presented to you that you now need to take into consideration and address, thank God for modern medicine, unless other it, it unless you have medical evidence, shoulda, coulda, wouldas don't count, but, um, and just because there is a policy in place to protect the hospital and medical malpractice and all of that, doesn't mean that you're bound by it. So one, remembering that you're a grown woman, first and foremost, you don't lose your power walking into the OB office or into the hospital. Secondly, Birth is normal, natural. Pregnancy is normal and natural for most people. Thank God for the medical staff and the medical providers when there is a, an emergency or something that um, is off or needs to be addressed. Outside of that, we need to know where the standard is and be confident in putting the protective standards up when we where we feel comfortable. So. In saying that, I want to give um, this acronym that we use in the birth world very often, uh, which helps us pull information from our providers to help us make informed decisions. The reason why making informed, educated decisions are important is because you as the patient um, ultimately have the power to say yay or nay and you want to have a good foundation to stand on right so you need information you need solid evidence that this is the right thing to do you need to be confident in it otherwise you can be in intimidated into anything or even make a decision and not understand why it happened and it looms over you for the rest of your life should i have done something else what if i did this you want to be sure and you want to know why and understand why you're making certain decisions and using this acronym can assist you with that brain so remember use your brain okay b what are the benefits of what you're suggesting to me why do you want me to be induced why do you want to do this test you know um what if i don't do that so what are the benefits of what you're suggesting r what are the risks you know we're going to hear the benefits because they're going to want you to do whatever it is that they're asking but what are the risks to what you're saying what am i going to have to live with three years from now after that c-section you know what is my what are my organs going to look like what is the scarring going to be like what is the postpartum going to be like tell me what the risks are what is the risk of maternal mortality i need to know that we live in a country that has one of the highest y'all i'm sweating out here but i don't mind because i'm about to get out in my garden all right but stay focused right 
Um, see, I lost it that quick. So, um, benefits, risks. Yeah, tell me what the risks are so that I can measure it for myself. Um, A, oh, I said maternal mortality. We're living in um, a country that has the highest. We pay the most on health, in health care, but have the highest rates of prematurity and maternal mortality, which really doesn't make any sense. In Georgia, don't even get me started on this state of mind. Um, so B, benefits, R, risks, A, what are my alternatives? So you've given me the benefits, you've told me the risks. I don't know if I'm comfortable with any of that. Is there something else that I could possibly do? Are there alternatives? What if I don't do that? If there's something else, what if I don't get induced? Is there something natural that I can try? Um, what are my options? Know your options. Then I, once you get all that information, what are, what does your intuition tell you? Intuition. What does your gut tell you? Do you feel safe? Do you feel heard? Do you feel informed? Do you feel competent enough to make an informed decision for yourself? Um, and then in, at the end of the day, what if I do nothing? Once again, whole grown woman, that whole woman thing. Yeah, we are whole grown women. What if I don't? want that vaginal exam I don't feel like anyone being in my vagina right now okay um, what if I don't want an induction I understand that babies born even three days too soon because I went to childbirth education classes three ba three days too soon um, babies can be born with or have a heightened risk of skin allergies food allergies and respiratory um, issues if I know that and I really don't have any evidence outside of we don't want this to happen, we don't want that to happen, we could this could happen, this placenta, placenta the waters, the fluids, and all that. If there is no evidence off of a test that you took or anything that's showing uh, an alert or red flag for me and my pregnancy, then I don't want to be placed in a box with the you know, majority of women being stifled through the business of being born. We have to set ourselves apart, especially in this era, and become informed instead of intimidated. Instead of going to a hospital and having a birth just happen to us, we're taking that power back and having our birth. I need to understand exactly what is going on with my body and with my baby and with my birth. This is my memory that I take with. You'll forget it, you'll get paid, you'll go as long as it wasn't too traumatic. But this sticks with me for the rest of my life, so I need to understand what's going on and I need to be the one to make the decision. So what if I don't do any of that? Look, I don't wanna get induced at all. Yeah, I know I am 40 weeks and five days, I'm about to be 41 weeks. You guys are sweating a little bit. You know, trust me, I've been carrying this child the whole time. I know how far along I am. But I also know that there's no difference from my 39th and 40th week me and baby are doing good I'm starting to have little contractions here or there my body is not broken and I understand that allowing labor to happen naturally is the safest and lowest risk for me um, and, and my birth unless there is evidence right so if there's no evidence if there if you're just hearing the same routine that most of us hear um, when we get start to so get stifled into the business of being born the baby assembly line um, at 38, 39 weeks, then what if I do nothing? What does that look like, doc? And some doctors may threaten to drop you. I've had clients that have um, been threatened to be dropped as a patient. Then, you know, it can be a very um, concerning and, and, and very intimidating because this is such a vulnerable space in time in life. So what do we do? We look at the reality, okay? Once again, they're providing a service. Is there anyone else that can provide this service to me if I need it? So let's just ask ourselves, you know, what do I feel comfortable with? Do you feel comfortable instead of getting induced at 39 and five weeks of five days or 40 weeks? Do you feel comfortable with 40 and five? Do you feel comfortable with 41 and two? Do you have a, a moment to where you, or a time to where you're like, okay, if I can't, go into labor if I don't go into labor at this time then I'm okay with this date if you don't have that date then you talk about your options now what's changing what if my provider does drop me hmm Let's think about that right what if they drop me what does that look like so when I go into labor what are you gonna do you can go to the hospital for those who are having a hospital birth right you're gonna go to the hospital 
And when you go to the hospital, what are they going to do? They're going to check you in. They're going to see you're in labor. They're going to be like, oh, crap, she needs to go to labor and delivery right now, right? So you're going to go up to labor and delivery. What's going to happen when you get to labor and delivery? The OB or midwife on call is going to assist you in delivering your baby. At the end of the day, let's think about that. The mother who's threatened to be dropped from that particular OB or midwife hasn't really lost much, in my opinion, unless you just were so attached to a person that threatened to drop you, right? So, so we have to think about what reality is outside of the space of fear. Fear, false evidence appearing real. We have to step outside of fear in order to embrace our strength in birth, embrace our confidence and our abilities, embrace, you know, going against the grain sometimes in an era that needs it desperately. Being that impact in, in birth and being that light um, by being educated, being supported, getting a birth team together if you are able but the best thing you can do is being informed. So how do you address a pushy OB? You get educated, you know your options, you get support, just like you're asking questions. Use your brain, use that acronym, benefits, risks, alternatives, intuition, and nothing. Um, and you go in there with confidence and ask the questions. And if, if you're not comfortable with being induced at 39, speak up for yourself. I'm not comfortable with that, what now? What does it look like if I don't? What does it look like if I, if I don't get induced at 40 weeks and five days? If my blood pressure is a little high, okay, what is the risks? What are the benefits to doing this? You know, what does your gut tell you? If you do have a doula, get, get some information from her on the risks and the benefits and the rates and you know, all of the things and you weigh out your options in what you feel comfortable, most comfortable doing. There is no wrong way as long as you're informed and you understand why you're making the decision you're making. So um, I hope that answers the question for this particular um, woman that was asking, but I thought that was worthy of a video because I get that question often. I address it often with my clients and it's really something we need to start embedding one in our teaching when we are talking to other women, when we're talking to other birth workers, the importance of restoring confidence in our abilities, restoring the importance, you know, and just hammering in the importance of childbirth education, not just for, um, birthing women, not just for their support, um, but even those who are affected by birth and who's not affected by birth. We either are going to give birth to women or we are going to, you know, support or we are going to know someone who's having a child, marry someone, you know, it affects, we don't, no one gets into this world without it. So it's beneficial information for everyone, even the smallest seed planted where there wasn't any knowledge can really change the trajectory on how somebody looks at birth, how they feel during their pregnancy and birth. So be encouraged and uh, I'll talk to y'all later.